So you just got your ViewSonic IFP. Let's talk a little bit about the accessories, what comes in the box and how to get it set up. So the most important thing in the box is this brown box. This is all the accessories. So let's take a look inside at what we have here. You're gonna have an HDMI cable, obviously for connecting devices, audio and video. You're also going to have the power cable to be able to plug it in. There will be a remote as well as batteries. You're also going to have a USB touch cable. This is a USB A to B cable. Now the device behind me, this is a 50 series board. It does have USB-C connectivity. However, that does not come in the box. If you have a 52 series board, you have all the same accessories. However, the 52 series board does come with a USB-C cable. Finally, the most important accessory in your box are the styluses. They're gonna be in a bag like this. There should be two of them. Don't forget that those styluses can magnetize to the front of the panel. So, now that we've gone through the accessories and what comes in the box, let's talk about initial setup. So when you power up your IFP, you're going to see this screen. Start by choosing your language. You can set your network settings. And then at this point, you'll wanna select the date and time. Now, the biggest thing you need to do here is just make sure that you select the correct time zone. Once you have your correct time zone, Everything else should auto update based on your network. We'll hit next. You'll have three modes to choose on your IFP for setup. We obviously recommend normal mode. Secured mode essentially removes all casting devices. So uh, anything that would allow you to display your device up wirelessly to the board. And then disabled mode actually turns off what we call the viewboard OS or the onboard operating system. Uh, be careful if you select that option because then you would need to get into the debug menu to re-enable it. We're just gonna leave this on normal mode. This option discusses what's called energy saving. So energy saving mode essentially is a setting that will have the board turn off after an hour of no touch or interactivity. And what that means is that every time I touch the board and it detects that touch, there's an internal timer that starts a 60 minute countdown. And if that 60 minute countdown goes all the way, the board will shut off. If I touch the board again, that timer resets. So if this device is gonna be in a room that's used a lot, we recommend that uh, you set it to performance. This would disable that Energy Star setting, and then we'll just confirm that we want it on the performance mode. Finally, we'll agree to the terms, and then this is going to launch us into the ViewBoard OS. All right, now that our ViewBoard is turned on and ready to go, let's talk about what you're looking at and some of the recommended settings. So first off, this is what we call the ViewBoard OS. This is essentially the home screen. If you ever get lost, you'll notice that there are physical buttons on the board next to the power button. Uh, the home or the house button will always take you back to this screen here. Uh, if you ever need to turn off the board, you just hold the power button down for about six seconds. You'll get a notification saying the board's gonna shut off. If I press the power button once, that does what we call blank screen. So it just turns off the backlight and then I can wake the board back up just by touching it or I can press that power button again. You'll also notice that you have volume keys on the front of the board. Now down here, you're gonna see your network status and your connection. So you'll see I have ethernet as well as a Wi-Fi card. If I touch those, that will take me to those settings. There's also a menu button. So the menu button shows me my inputs. It also allows me to adjust the brightness as well as the volume, or if I wanted to change more things like enable blue light mode and stuff like that, I can do that from the display settings. Now there's an actual settings option. If you press this little arrow here, this opens up all your apps on the ViewBoard OS. And if you scroll down, uh, you'll see that there's a settings button. You can also access the same settings by pressing the gear icon 
on the front of the panel, that physical button, and then that will also open up the settings menu here. Now, earlier I showed you that there was Wi-Fi and Ethernet on the home screen. Wi-Fi and Ethernet can also be accessed here. Under the display options, this is where you can change the default wallpaper background if you would like to. Under preferences, you can adjust the date and time again if you uh, somehow forgot to do that during the initial setup process. But this startup and shutdown menu is an important option to pay attention to. First off, you can select uh, what input the board turns on to. So for example, if I had a slot in PC or some sort of modular device connected to the board, I might want it to always start on that input. By default, the board will just turn on to whatever the last input used was. So for example, if I turn off the board and it was on HDMI 2, the next time I turn on the board, it's gonna go to HDMI 2. If I wanted it to say, go to my built-in PC, I can select that here. Uh, by default, the board will turn off all the way if it detects no signal. So if I unplug my laptop and I get that no signal screen, uh, after a certain amount of time, the board will turn off. You can change that setting to just turn off the backlight, which I uh, modeled earlier where I pressed the power button. If you're wanting to save energy, we recommend leaving it on this setting. The standby mode is something similar. So uh, essentially, if the board is turning off, the hibernate mode is like a, a full shutdown, right? It, it turns off all the major system functions, but you can still wake it up remotely. The sleep function will keep the board running. And so that's gonna consume more power. So again, we generally recommend to leave it on hibernate. Here's that energy star option. The energy star option is something you can configure during the initial setup. But if you forgot to do that, this is where you can enable or disable this. Again, as a reminder, this is a 60 minute timer. Every time I touch that timer resets. If that timer gets down to zero, the board will shut off. Down here, you can also set a boot schedule so you can tell the board when to turn on or you can tell it when to turn off. We can go back by touching the back button on top or we can use the back physical button on the front of the board. Next, we're gonna go to input source. Here, you can do things like label your input. So instead of HDMI one, if you wanna call it computer or uh, whatever it needs to so that people are maybe recognize a little easier. You can change those here. Under the source option, you're gonna notice that there are different things you can configure like the board by default will automatically switch inputs if it detects a new signal. So uh, the purpose of this feature is if I plug in my laptop, it automatically switches to whatever input I connected my laptop to. The most important thing in this setting menu is the energy saving option. And this might be a little confusing because we just talked about Energy Star. Well, what's the difference between Energy Star and energy saving? Well, energy saving is that no signal we talked about earlier. So when you unplug your laptop and it says no signal, that timer is 10 minutes. And so when that timer hits zero, it'll turn off the board. So if you wanted a longer period of time, say 30 minutes, before the board shuts off after no signal, you can adjust that here or you can turn it off fully. The next thing we're gonna look at is under system. Uh, we can uh, find important information here, uh, such as the firmware version, the serial number, everything in the about device. Uh, this is helpful information if you ever have an issue with the board and you're reaching out to customer service or one of your reps, uh, you're gonna want that information. But here you'll notice that there's a system update option. Under system update, all of our boards are designed for auto update of firmware. And what this means, the auto update, is when the board turns off. So every time the board shuts down, it's gonna do a quick check for any new versions of firmware. If you don't want to do that, you can disable that here. You can manually check for updates. Um, or you can browse to local updates. We have a separate video on how to conduct firmware updates, so be sure to check that out, but just know that this is the area where you would go find them. Now, some models of our boards, uh, not all of them, but a few, you might notice a setting uh, under Energy Star where we were looking at it earlier. 
uh, that's called body detection. And what body detection is, is that some of our boards have a little light sensor on it. And essentially it's just looking for movement. And so what this sensor is designed to do is basically just detect if anything's moving in the room. It's not a camera or scanning anything, it's just a light sensor. And what it does is that if it detects movement or light or something like that, it will reset that shutdown timer. So if you want that disabled and you happen to notice that you have that setting, you can go disable it. Now we have another video that goes deeper into all the Viewboard OS settings. So be sure to check that out if you have questions about settings we didn't cover, but hopefully this is enough for you to get your board up and running and configured uh, for everyone to be successful with its use.